You understand? It's about human beings selling themselves out. The echelon attitude here, the needs of the few outweigh the needs of humanity. And sorry, that just isn't right. You know, but it's going to have to be humanity that's going to rise up and take the stand. You're just going to have to turn off your televisions. They're going to have to get in their car. They're going to have to fire everybody in Washington, D.C. that knows and does nothing. And they're going to have to do something. You know, this apathy's got to end. Otherwise, the way we live is going to end. Period. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, and I'm not coming from a fear space. I'm really quite angry about the apathy and the fact that, you know, when people give lectures and try to tell this, people want to stand up and fight with them. Look at what's happening around us. The indications are everywhere. Everywhere. The truth is now an obscure thing. You know, the lie is the norm. There's something wrong here. What's wrong with this picture? Sorry, I'm getting crazy. No, you're not. You're expressing frustration, I think. Hi. Uh, why are the... Why... Aside from the carnivorous aspect to the Alpha Draconians, why else are they dangerous to humanity? Because they don't like us. And what are they willing to do with humanity? Eat us. There's no need for us. I mean, look, look at where we are. Look at us right now as a civilization, as a society. Okay? They don't need anything. They have all this technology that they want. We can't really offer them except maybe work, do some work for them. But they don't need all of us to work for them. They don't respect human life in any way whatsoever. Um, and this goes back to Lyra, to where the original war started. Um, they... When they got to Lyra originally, they saw this, this human race that was plentiful in food, that could grow food, that could do all of these agricultural things. And mankind on a whole is really agricultural. We're really, we really, as a race, if we were left alone, would be nurturing the earth. We were living in tribal communities like the Native American Indians did. Um, you know, that's really, that's really our, our essence, our nature, I'm sorry. That's really our nature, our essence. And, um, you know, the cities and, and, and the culture that we're living in now has totally cut us off from the land, from who, what our real essence is, which is nature. And, um, uh, you know, we're starting to feed off each other now. Um, I, it's, it's like so bizarre. You know, I can't, it's like when I see the Andromedans or, or when I've been exposed to the Pleiadians, when I see how they love, they live and, and, and they teach and they, they live with each other and they respect each other and I come here. It's like, you know, it reminds me of that sentence that, that Abraham Lincoln, that, that quote that Abraham Lincoln once said. You know, when I'm, when I'm, if you are above the earth looking down, you could be an atheist. But when I'm on the earth looking up and seeing the heavens, I, I know there's a God. It's like the duality. And I think enough of us, more, more of us, really needs, need to start taking the perspective that what we're doing here isn't right. Um, you know, we, we, we need to get in touch with, with what's out there, um, with just the, the whole idea that, God, how did we get here? What makes me be here? You know, as opposed to going home after work, turning on TV, watching three hours of television, going to bed, getting up the next morning, going to work, and doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, like robots. Throw the televisions away. Just throw them away. Okay, uh, what are the physical characteristics of the Alpha Draconians? What do they look like? Uh, we, I don't have that. Maybe it's in the car. <laughs> um, they're ugly. I mean, they think we're ugly, too. You know, and I guess it's all a matter of perspective and belief system. In my belief system, and I'm only taking responsibility for me, they're ugly. They're anywhere from 7 to 22 feet tall. They can weigh up to 1,800 pounds. They're reptilian. The, uh, the longer, the, the ones that have stubby tails, if you see one that has no tail, he's, he's of the warrior class or, or the worker class. The longer the tail, the higher their rank. When you see one with long tails, with, with winged appendages, he's considered royalty. Whenever you see one, you ought to just run like hell. You shouldn't approach it. You shouldn't provoke it. Just get the hell out of its way. Just get out of its way. Just run. You know, um, 
There is a way to kill them if you can't cut off their head. They have two hearts. There's one here underneath this armpit and one here. Or if you can't get to that area and you need to slow it down, you need to hit it right above its groin area. It has a very large liver. You need to wound it there to slow it down. Um, it is not something where man-to-man -man combat you're going to be able to, to deal with because they apparently have the strength of, of 12, 15 men. They're incredibly quick. They're incredibly psychic. They know what you're going to do before you do it. Um, and, and, you know, if they get here in mass, we got real problems. Real problems. Uh, what did the Andromedans advise human beings to do if they encounter an alpha dracon? To, to leave. You leave its space. Get away. To get away. What if they can't? Then they can't. And if they can't? Uh, they'll usually be killed. And what do they have the Andromedans said, spoken in any detail about what a human being should do if they are in that position? For karmic purposes, for look at that, that. That's that's not karmic at all. Or a lot or of these, no, all of this metaphysical stuff. Or you know, where you chose to be here. A lot of you know, in some situations, that's true. Uh -huh. When you're creating your reality and in your space, but when you're being invaded, that's not karma. That's a violation of free will. You know, if you um, but free will is being violated, Alex, what should you do? You should you should ask for help. Okay. Ask for help. Put a call up to God. Put a call up to heaven. Put a call to the Andromedans, the Pleiadians, whomever. Just put a call up and and just and deal with it. You know, I don't know. Um, I mean, that's just the nature of, of, of the beast. They don't like us. We're, we're considered a food source for them. For them. You know, we're a food source for the graves, but in an entirely different way. Have they taught us to be carnivorous through the, the belief systems? Have yep. they taught us? To eat meat and eat, eat flesh? Uh -huh. Well, it lowers the body's vibration. It lowers the body's vibration. So, if, uh, if our body vibrated at a higher length, we would spiritually be evolving regardless of what our religions were teaching us. And they can't have that. They can't have us being free. So they can't have us not being in control because then we're responsible for ourselves. So as we move away from eating meat and more towards vegetarianism, um, we we begin to raise our vibrational level and be and and break this cycle. It helps. Not everybody has to stop eating meat. It's not an absolute requirement. It certainly helps. But some people's belief systems will be that they just need a piece of meat. And for whatever their reasons are, that's fine. If you want to eat meat, that's fine. But you know what? Feed your mind. Feed your mind with 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 spirit, with questions about existence about what it is we're doing here, why we're here, what the hell is really going on, why is it that I have all these material things and I'm still miserable in my life? Well, you know, I know that a lot of people with questions, where are some of the truthful answers? You mentioned one book, The Gods of Eden, that you felt really strongly about. What, what other sources are there that you feel that we have access to, aside from our inner selves, which is actually the best place to probably begin looking, but are there, are there other starting points that people can use that you know of? I mentioned Gods of Eden. Uh, George Andrews' books, um, ETs Among Us. There's a lot of information in there that not only deals with the ETs, but also the world political government, which right now is very dangerous for humanity because it's part of the great plan. It's part of, the, uh, of their regressive alien plan to, to keep us in jail. Okay, do not pass go, but keep us in jail. Um, oh, God, suddenly I draw a blank. Okay, just um, as you think about it, interject it into right. the conversation. Okay. You mentioned throw the television out. Are television programs conditioning our youth into accepting these hostile beings, do you think? Or is that just human hey, beings doing hey, anything for a buck? I, you know, I don't necessarily know. I don't know, you know, but, but I, the violence is desensitizing. You know, it, violence is just a way of life now. We've been taught that. We've been um, uh, programmed that violence is just a way of life. So when we see really violent acts, oh, oh, that's too bad. 
uh, you know, honey, what's on Channel 7? Or what movie and does nothing, and they're gonna have to do something. You know, this apathy's got to end, otherwise the way we live is going to end. Period. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, and I'm not coming from a fear space. I'm really quite angry about the apathy and the fact that, you know, when people give lectures and try to tell this, people want to stand up and fight with them. Look at what's happening around us. The indications are everywhere. Everywhere. The truth is now an obscure thing. You know, the lie is the norm. There's something wrong here. What's wrong with this picture? Sorry, I'm getting crazy. No, you're not. You're expressing frustration, I think. Hi. Uh, why are the... You understand it's about human beings selling themselves out. The echelon attitude here, the needs of the few outweigh the needs of humanity. And sorry, that just isn't right. You know, but it's going to have to be humanity that's going to rise up and take the stand. You're just going to have to turn off your televisions. They're going to have to get in their car. They're going to have to fire everybody in Washington, D.C. that knows. Why, aside from the carnivorous aspect to the Alpha Draconians, why else are they dangerous to humanity? Because they don't like us. And what are they willing to do with humanity? Eat us. There's no need for us. I mean, look, look at where we are. Look at us right now as a civilization, as a society. Okay? They don't need anything. They have all this technology that they want. We can't really offer them except maybe work, do some work for them. But they don't need all of us to work for them. They don't respect human life in any way whatsoever. Um, and this goes back to Lyra.